everybody, I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Manager for Enterprise DNA, and I wanted to provide you just a brief introduction to the video you're about to see. Uh, this is a huge month for us in that we are transitioning from being a site focused strictly on Power BI to one focused on the larger Power Platform. And as such, we've released two uh, courses we're really excited about this month. Uh, one is a masterclass focused on Power Apps and the other on Power Automate. And these are both comprehensive courses with about eight hours of material each. Um, and what we wanted to do was just provide you samples of both um, content that we think stands alone as useful um, to you, but also hopefully gives you the incentive to check out the, the larger courses. So we'll provide that information in the comments. Um, and as always, thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy. Hi everyone. In this section, we'll be creating flows from scratch. Now the goal is to basically create the same flow that we had created using a template, the Twitter one over here, but we want to be able to do it right from scratch. So without any templates, basically just making the triggers and actions ourselves. If we go to the create section, we can see again, there are five flows. These two we've talked about so far, these three we haven't really touched on at all. Um, and even these two that we've talked about, we've mainly looked at how to build from templates. Today, we're actually going to be building it from scratch. So let's click create an automated flow here. Uh, let's give it a name called scratch flow. I'll call mine that. And um, I want to make the Twitter from scratch. So I'm going to put that in. For your flows trigger, let's not populate it for now, just because we want to get the development environment set up first. And let's click skip. Perfect. Now we're in our flow diagram page. And hopefully, you know, this, this should be familiar to you. Uh, Basically, this is just the same page where, you know, we see the trigger, then the action, then the condition, and all that. Uh, so this is where we'll be building. So again, the goal is to basically recreate the flow that we had created before from a template, but now we're creating from complete scratch. And throughout the process, we'll learn about triggers, actions, conditions, expressions, dynamic content, and how all that works to basically build up your knowledge base in the beginner section of this course. So... The first thing that a flow needs, especially if it's an automated flow, is the actual trigger itself. We want the trigger to be when a new tweet is posted. Now, there are two ways to build triggers here. You can basically search up triggers right over here, very simple, or you can specify the actual connector or application you want the trigger to be run from, and then find a trigger that way instead. So let's do it the second way. We know that the trigger is going to be from the Twitter connector. So let's search up the Twitter connector here. Perfect. Here's the Twitter connector. Let's click this. And it'll basically show us all the triggers associated with Twitter. Now, the only trigger that is associated with twi Twitter here is when a new tweet is posted. And you can see some more information here as to what that actually does. Let's go back and, for example, you know, we can change this to Outlook. Let's look at the Outlook connector. So if we look at the Outlook connector, it has a bunch of different triggers. You can have a trigger when a new email arrives, when it's flagged, when it arrives in a mailbox, when it, whenever you're mentioned, when an event is modified, all of that fun stuff. And there's even more as well. Actions are a bit different. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, but just so you know, when you're basically building these things, it's a lot easier to first choose the connector or the application that you want to run the trigger or action on, and then to choose the trigger and action after that point. So for us, what we want to do is very simple. We basically search up Twitter. It gets us the connector. And then here is the trigger that we want. Perfect. And let's click that guy. And awesome, we are set. Now, like we discussed before, Basically, Microsoft has already gone ahead and made the Twitter connector for us and has populated with a bunch of triggers. When Microsoft made this trigger, they basically put the search text as a variable for us to fill in so that this trigger is not, you know, triggered whenever a new tweet is posted. It's triggered when a new tweet is posted and a search text matches this particular item over here. And that's it. We've set up our own trigger from scratch. Let's go through the next step now. Let's add an action. 
So when this trigger is triggered, uh, let's fill in the search text as well. You know, we want this to be power automate, but again, we have different options here. You can either, you know, you can put it a simple hashtag instead, or you can do a username here. Uh, but we want to basically do it uh, using a search term. So our search term is going to be power automate. There we go. And now we're all good. Let's add in a action. So let's click new step. And now this tells us it wants an action. Again, as I mentioned before, first it's always, you know, first you should always choose the connector and then the associated action with the connector. We obviously want it to um, do a few things, but let's uh, let's let's see what other connectors are available. So, for example, when you need you to read us post it, I'm just spitballing here. But let's say if you wanted to notify you via Teams, if you have Teams, for example, you search up Teams, and there we go. And you can see the Teams actions are you can basically post a message, post a reply to a message, create a channel. Not sure if you would want to do this, but you can. Uh, you can do a bunch of different things here. Let's say instead you want to be able to um, uh, receive a notification. So Microsoft has a notification system called Notifications. And perfect, they'll send you a mobile notification or an email notification. So there's a few different things that you can do here. Again, the best way to do it is to search this amazing list of connectors and then go from there. There's even things like, you know, you don't have to stay in the Microsoft ecosystem by all means. You can go to Gmail if you want. And Gmail has a bunch of connectors as well. So if you click Gmail, you can basically send an email to a Gmail account or using a Gmail account. Um, you know, alternatively, you can also do ticketing. So if you use Trello a lot, you can add an action on Trello where you can basically create a card based on every time a new tweet is posted. So the possibilities are really endless here. Again, what we want to do is we want it to mail. So let's go to mail. And our action here is simply send an email notification. And there we go. Uh, again, the person who made this connector or action needs you to write in these arguments, which makes sense. It wants you to specify who it's going to, what the subject line is going to be, and the body of the message. You can add in advanced options as well. So this person decided to basically add in things like, you know, allows you to do uh, attachments or copies or blind carbon copies, that kind of stuff. So there's a few things you can do. We'll just stick to the defaults for now uh, and then go from there. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.